everyone. I found a reference photo of some yellow dandelions that intrigued me. So I'm going to use it um, really just for the basic composition, but I'm going to try to abstract it a little and sort of make it my own um, while following the, the composition. I have attached um, a picture of the reference photo to this post. I'm going to start off with um, some different dark blues and greens. That's my ultramarine blue. I'm going to do some Payne's gray and some Hansa yellow. And I'm going to uh, tone my canvas with a bunch of just blues and greens. And then I'm going to work sort of backwards, filling in the negative space and carving out the flowers as I go. I like to paint like this, um, especially when I'm going for a little bit more of an abstracted look because you don't really know when you're doing this part what you're going to get which parts are going to pop out in the end what you're going to get for an end product i mean you kind of know but you get some pops of color that are a nice surprise if that makes sense hopefully it will a little bit more as we go I'm choosing dark colors because this will help to create a sense of depth. My vase will be on this side. Actually, gonna wet my brush a tiny bit so I can get my paint to flow on nice and thin. If your paint isn't flowing across your canvas, try to add a little water, or you might want to add a little bit of flow medium. I'm using fluid acrylics, and so they're already. Uh, pretty loose. If you're using heavy body acrylics, you might want to add water uh, or flow medium to thin down your paint for your first layer. And I'm just using the side of my brush flat like this and I'm just going to drag it around and make some different marks. My colors are not very bright because I want my brighter colors and my flowers to stand out a little more and to have the background sort of recede. I'm just trying to get all those little holes that it didn't paint didn't quite sink in. Just trying to get a lot of variety. I'm 
Sometimes the more you have going on in the background like this, the better. Touch more Payne's Gray. Just thinking about my vase over here. That's gonna be on this side. And so I want it to just get some weird blue marks going on in the background. All right, I'm gonna let this dry completely. And then I'm gonna start to shape my overall composition um, by carving out the negative space first. All right, this is pretty dry now. I'm just going to look and see. I, I want to have my face on the, the bottom right. And I'm trying to see what would make the best vase. I kind of like this, so I'm gonna rotate my canvas. I have just a regular piece of chalk, um, and I'm going to just sketch a basic composition. This chalk will just wipe off very easily with some water, um, but it gives me a visual for painting in my negative space. So I, I'm just going to mark where a lot of the flowers are going to be. So I'm going to have a bunch of stems and, you know, really I'm just going to mark, I think, the flowers that are going to be closer to the top and coming off the sides. And then in here, it's going to be really just very mixed. And I'm loosely following what I see on the reference photo. And so there's going to be tons of stems and flowers. Um, I'm going to go around the outside and start to carve this out a little and then paint the flowers on top. I'm going to go with my Payne's Gray and white to start. So I'm going to do a lighter background. I'm going to grab a pretty big brush. This one's a bright size 12. I would say less is more at this point. You can always go back in with more negative space um, color. But it's a bit harder to, if you, if you do too much, then you might have to paint over um, you paint over the negative space and make an abstract again, and it's almost kind of like starting from the beginning. So I kind of go a little slower. I'm not making any perfect shapes. Just trying to get the basic outline of my flowers here. I'm 
and I'll put in a few spots um, so that you can kind of see the background, like the wall. That's pretty good to start. And then next I'm gonna start to layer my yellow flowers. That's probably gonna take a couple of layers because the yellow, the yellows that I have anyway are pretty translucent. Um, and I want to get a good amount of the green and blue covered. I have Hansa yellow. I might use some of this um, Azo yellow because the paint, this Liquitex paint is a little bit thicker, but we'll see if I need it. I'm also gonna add a little primary magenta because um, the center of the dandelions are a little, uh, they lean a little more orange, it's warmer, and then it leans a little more yellow. Um, light yellow toward the outside. So I'm gonna grab just whatever brush I have here. This is a bright size four. I'm gonna put in a little bit of red. Gonna add a little white to help it be a little bit more opaque. And I'm gonna just put some yellow in the area of the dandelions. I'm not trying to make fully formed flowers yet. I'm just getting this first layer in. My negative space color is not dry, but that's okay. I don't mind if it blends a little bit. I'm trying not to make each one be exactly the same shape. Get some variety. And now I'm gonna add in even more than I originally outlined. Oh, that's too much red. It's a little dark, but it might work for some shadowy areas. And I don't want them all to look exactly the same. Some of them will be more formed than others. Some of them will just be a little bit more abstract. And I'll probably just leave some like yellow and orange marks. So you can see kind of just messy brush strokes, not, not overthinking it. I do like when some of them go over the edge. I might have another one up here. So you can always add in lots more. There. I'm just layering a little bit now. I think I'm gonna let this dry for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna wipe off the chalk marks once it's dry and then I'm gonna add my next layer. I let everything dry and this is just a water bottle. And I'm gonna just 
just get rid of these chalk lines. And so I'm noticing I really like these marks in the um, in the stems. Uh, so I'm happy that I took that approach with my original abstract background. Um, I'm gonna add in a little bit more green, I think, and maybe a little bit more color to the vase, but overall I'm happy with those uh, background marks. This is my paint spray. A little bit of yellow, and I'll do a little more ultramarine blue. And I'll add a little bit more white up here. Just spritz this paint to keep it a little bit more wet. I just have a bunch of um, brushes here. Some looks like round, some filbert. Any any shape will do whatever you have handy. I'm gonna just take something small. This one's a flat size two. And I'm just gonna mix up some different greens. I'm not gonna to pay too much attention to the reference photo anymore. Not that I really did to begin with, but I think you can see, I just did like the vase and then the cascading um, dandelions. Where I want this to be a little bit more abstract, I'm not going to worry about um, trying to copy the photo. Now I'm just trying to look and see what, what I think will work. Maybe add in some more stems. I'm going to just try to put a little more color and marks into the vase. I'm also just scraping with the side of my brush sometimes instead of using the bristles. You can get some different looking brush strokes that way. Also don't want my brush strokes all moving in the same direction. I'm trying to get just a little bit more variety. I might just put a couple of lines that sort of look like stems. Trying not to overdo it. Can add a couple of little highlights. And I'm just gonna layer over some of these stems that I made up here. If you do everything in one solid color, it tends to look a little bit flat. So if you wanna to try to achieve a more dimensional looking flower or stem or anything, you wanna add um, a variety of value, meaning a variety of light and dark so that you get that highlight and shadow. And that's gonna help your painting to read more dimensionally. I 
and you can see I'm not being smooth with my brush. Um, I want things to be sort of jagged looking. And also you can overlap stems and leaves and flowers so it doesn't look like your flowers are just floating on top of the canvas, on top of the leaves. You get, it looks more um, cohesive if everything, uh, not everything, but if a lot of uh, the different parts are overlapping. All right. I think that's good. I am going to let that dry for a minute and then I'm going to uh, mix up some more yellow and start layering my dandelions. I almost want to leave it like this because I don't want to ruin it. I think it's cute. <laughs> um, I'm just flipping my palette paper over so I can use um, what's the clean part that's left right here. Um, I'm going to use Hansi Yellow white. I think I have a little primary magenta there. It might be dried up on me. We'll see. Um, I don't want to do too much. I like the simplicity of it. Um, I like the composition. I think the vase and the stems came together pretty easily. I'm going to leave those the way they are. And I'm just going to put a little bit of more paint on the, um, the dandelions. So it, a dandelion has tons of little, uh, really small, straight, um, I guess they're petals. I don't know if that's what they're called. Um, I'm not going to put every single one. I'm going to put some, which will just sort of suggest them, uh, but not make it literal. And... I'm gonna put a little bit more orange, a yellow orange, sort of in the middle. I'm using, what am I using? A bright brush size three. I would use any small brush. I, I really don't think the shape matters too much, especially because I'm not painting like this. It's more that I'm dragging the brush and you can do that with any, any brush. And I'm going for more organic shapes. I wanna just try to get a little bit of shades of orange. Can even push it a little more than what you see in the photo if you want it to be a little bit more colorful. I think reference photos are great, but if you want to paint more abstract, start with the reference photo and then move away from it. Um, when I paint a whole painting using a reference photo, my paintings end up being a lot um, tighter because I'm trying to copy what I see rather than doing more um, what I think. All right, I'm gonna add in a little bit of white to start to brighten some of this up. It's my Hansa Yellow. I never did use the Azo that I showed you at the beginning. I'm gonna just put a few marks like this to sort of suggest those lines on the dandelion.
And everyone doesn't have to look the same. You can have some that have more form than others, and then just leave others looking like some more abstract blobs. Don't be afraid to make marks because you can just paint over whatever you don't like. Just kind of, um, I think the more you paint, the more you can use your intuition. And it, it took me a long time to get comfortable just slapping paint on the canvas, sort of. I guess it's randomly, but it's intuitive. Um, but I know now that there aren't any mistakes. You can just paint over them. You can let your acrylic paint dry and go over it. You can go over it five times if you need to, especially when you're painting abstract flowers like this. Um, going over it more times is just going to add more texture, which only adds to the painting. It doesn't take anything away. down I'm gonna make this one a little bigger. A little more orange in here, and I'm gonna have these be a little less, less formed just for some variety. I'm going to paint over a little of this blue up here, but I do like how um, some of them are a little bit more translucent looking. I'm going to take um, a little bit of green and just kind of go back in so that everything, like I was saying earlier, is a little more mixed and I don't have um, my flowers just sort of floating on top. That the leaves and everything is all kind of mixed together. I could definitely keep layering these, but I like the way they look. Um, I want to just keep these pretty simple.
Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed day one of my seven days of flowers. I'm uh, definitely starting a Facebook group this weekend. So if you paint anything from any of my tutorials and you wanna post it, feel free. You can also always tag me on Instagram. Yeah, I'm calling this one finished. Thanks for watching.